As one of the most economical dynamic countries on Earth, China's growth has been attracting worldwide attention for decades. Forty years ago, China's share of the world economy was less than 2%. At that time, ordinary Chinese families spent about 60% of their income on food. Today, China is the world's second largest economy and its citizens spend almost the same proportion of their income on non-essential items and services as they did once on food. Much of it now bought at the touch of a button. Our journey will take us to three separate areas. So I'll be going along the, the Yangtze. I'm going to the Pearl River Delta. And where are you heading? Uh, well, I'm heading to uh, the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei region. Now I'm a bit closer to home. Representing different stages of China's development. Painful. It still switches on. <laughs> They're definitely trying to make it to the huge megalopolis. Absolutely. I mean, if by no other virtue than just population, a lot of these cities are very large by Western international standards. Along the way, we'll introduce some of the people and methods that made all this possible. Hi there. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I understand you're going to show me the bridge today. Of course. Oh, fantastic. Well, after you. <laughs> I've been in China for almost three years now, and in that time, I've been fortunate enough to see quite a lot of the country, probably about a dozen or so provinces so far, I'd estimate. We've just spotted some white dolphins. China first announced its policy of reform and opening up in 1978. Within two years, four special economic zones had been created, where tax incentives were on offer, foreign ownership was legalised, and there was a less restrictive policy environment. Two of these zones, Shenzhen and Zhuhai, form part of the Pearl River Delta economic zone, which covers an area slightly larger than the US state of Massachusetts, and is where I'm off to now. Since the start of reform and opening up, the Pearl River Delta has developed rapidly. Greg will discover how the region promotes talent, capital and information to a greater extent in the new era. I've lived in China for 12 years and I've traveled through every province. Chinese friends often call me a Zhongguo Tong or Old China Hand. <laughs> This ancient poem describes how the Yangtze area has long abounded the town. The last time I was there, I found a lot of inspiration for writing. The Yangtze River Economic Belt crosses nine provinces and two municipalities. It accounts for 40% of China's GDP and population. In the following days, I'll journey along this river to discover how this historically rich area has continued to prosper in the new era. We include Shanghai, which has 2,700 inhabitants per square kilometer. So you go to Shanghai and you have this very delicate food. When you get to Wuhan, you have, you know, uh, Xianla. Yeah, Xianla. Yeah. Xianla. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to eating on this trip. The trip's going to take a few years. <laughs> I've covered China for the past few years. And one of the most interesting stories in that time has been the country's continued economic rise. Development at such a pace has not come without issues. It may not look like it, but I'm here in the heart of China, Beijing. Just a few short miles in that direction is the epicenter of one of the most developed and modern cities on the planet. But as you can see here, some work still needs to be done. Beijing Tianjin Hebei is the biggest urbanized region in northern China. However, the cities here have vast gaps in their levels of economic development. There are signs the Chinese government are working to remedy this. Obviously, if they, get, if they can get it right here, then that can be modeled, it could be used for other parts of China. Starting today, Owen will head to the Beijing Tianjin Hebei area to explore how China will balance regional development. For me, this trip is all about discovery. They've told me how to row, but I just keep on going around in circles, so I've still got a lot to learn. Here we go. 
China is poised to wield ever greater influence on the world stage. Never before in recent history has an economy this large belonged to a country that is still developing. What they're doing in this region is trying to spread that development more evenly rather than have this focus purely on Beijing. 40 years after reform and opening up began, China is now embarking on the next stage of its economic journey. So join us to see more of how the country's economic growth has been driven by this policy, whose effects are now increasingly being felt all around the world.